welcome to Bike Racing Without Mercy on Sunday morning. And today, the intent is to complete Ed's 3015 training. Hey Daniel, how are you today, sir? Thank you for joining. So I'm looking to complete Ed's 3015s this morning. I was meant to do them yesterday on the Alp. Hey Chris, good day. I was meant to do the 3015s yesterday during a race on the Alp, but it really didn't come together. And today Ed had asked, well, prescribed basically zone three, three blocks of 20 minutes with a, 30, uh, a 15 second surge every two minutes. And basically yesterday's race up out of the Zwift ended up being exactly that, i.e. 275 watts over 52 minutes with a lot of power surges. So basically I did yesterday, today's training yesterday I'm going to do Friday's training today, which is the 3015s. Morning, Boris. Thanks for joining. How are you? Giacomo, how's it going? Are your vlogs coming? Excellent. Do check out Cycle Nutter. Have you seen, Giacomo, that I answered your question? <coughs> which Star Wars character would you be? <laughs> yes. If I could lend you some drops, Chris, you'd be welcome to them. Actually, not even lend, I'd give you the drops. I don't ever intend to spend them. Morning, Phil. How are you today? How's the training going? How oh, foggy and rainy is it, Daniel? Because you are in the north of England. It's quite sunny here in London. So with the 30 15s, I'm going to try and stay seated. Because I think I've got out the habit of staying seated and getting out of the saddle and really mashing. And Adrian Timmis yesterday, who's a cycling coach, he did comment on the fact that my cadence is very low on the climb and I'm not really dancing on the pedals. So I'm going to try and hit the 30 second sprints at 115 to 120% of FTP, i.e. 345 to 360 watts. A short race, nice Phil. Short races are better. So what's your vlog about today, Mr. Nutter? Just warming up the glutes and the hamstrings here. What does two hours keeping the chain tight mean, Daniel? Just like nice pedaling technique. Hey Alex, how are you? It's a long time no speak. Hope all's well. I've seen you put in some lovely rides. So it's good to see you. So Phil, which race are you going to take down? Ah, top end endurance, nice. Oh, we see, so not a nice little zone two, basically, stroke zone three. That makes sense. Morning, Monsieur Rouleau. Hope you're good today. Hope you're getting some time off today. And that you've got some holiday planned later on um, next week, over the weekend. And the weather's going to be like this, apparently. I know you're normally putting down some huge rides, so looking forward to seeing that on Strava. So 
So today, for anyone who's just joined, it's just 30 15s. I've got 13 30 second efforts. Um, then a five minute recovery, then another 13. Morning, Alan. How are you today, sir? Loving your polarized training, you're making good gains. Three R sand and sequoias, Rich. Phil, Phil Rich. <laughs> Three R sand and sequoias is hell. I think it's, I personally think that is one of the hardest courses on Zwift because that undulating terrain and those then kind of, you know, three and a half, four percent climbs. I don't know what it is, but people are going not just full gas, they're going max effort, vein popping out your neck gas. <laughs> they're horrendous. So yeah, good luck with that, Phil. That's gonna be training stress score like 100 in about 30 minutes. Wayne, morning to you. Thank you for joining. It's 30, 30 15 today. Hey, Stefan, yeah. I'm a glutton for punishment, but I want to practice staying seated on the climb. <coughs> and I'm prepared to do that to get back into a good cycling um, technique in terms of the pedal stroke and sacrifice some watts if necessary. So I just need to grab a towel, one second. So I was saying at the start of this, oh, sorry, I've got to get clippy. I can manage not to clip in even on a stationary bike. My clumsiness knows no bounds. So as I was saying at the start of this, this morning Ed had slated for me three blocks of 20 minutes up a zone three, i.e. 250 to 270 watts. And every two minutes I was meant to do a 15 second power surge in the 300 to 400 watt range. Basically I did that yesterday on out the Zwift during the race. It was 52 minutes at 275 watts and there was a lot of kind of power peaks and surges during that. And so I figured I would can basically that training today and replace it with the 1530s that I was meant to do um, on Friday. I needed a rest day on Friday, so I didn't do anything on Friday. So that's the intent. 30 15s, 30 second sprints, 115 to 120 second of FTP, but staying seated. I'm gonna try and spin. I use trainer difficulty 75%. David, morning sir, how are you? I always wonder, David, and I know you're not, I always think, are you the um, Garmin David Miller, who wrote the, well, wrote the most wonderful cycling books? It's one of the, David Miller is most definitely one of the people that really got me interested in cycling before I started cycling. I used to watch him on ITV4, commenting on La Vuelta, then I started reading his books and I realized what a beautiful sport it is. And he's very frank about obviously his past, but also the fact that he then raced clean from about 2005 or six. Oh, I turned, oh crikey, sorry. Um, how do I turn back? Oops, no, 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 no. Oh, hang on a second. Right. Oh, right. How do you get the, how do I get the bar? No, not that. Oh, I know, actually, I, no, 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 back. I know what to do. Yeah, I've got these CV arcade buttons. There we go. I don't need the menu to turn. Well, there you have it. That basically sums up how I get myself into such extreme difficulty on such a regular basis. Thank you very much for the warning, Stefan and Daniel. Hold down you, okay, nice one. Ryan, morning to you, sir, how are you? Happy Sunday. I'm Reuben. I've got to say, the rides you put in about three weeks ago, like consecutive 150, 220 kilometers, and the average power you were putting down was incredible. 
Let's get the, uh, the glutes and the hams warmed up. Thank you for joining Daniel. Daniel Graves, we've got two Daniels in the stream. Always good, it's a good sign. How are you this morning, sir? So I'm doing the training today fasted on just the amino acids and cold coffee. It's relatively short. Yeah, the Metal Factory is a very factual book, isn't it, Phil? It's not the most, oh, here we go. Why did it? It's a very kind of factual read, but it's very interesting. I do, I do wish it was a little bit less kind of dry, but the insight that you get from it is incredible. I think I'm going the right way. Hey, Ed. I know you're about to race, sir. Slowly building me back up again, yeah. There's a bit of a rude awakening yesterday in terms of the, um, the race up out of the Zwift. It's way below par. Which is strange, because I felt in the week, although they, they were much shorter efforts, my power was good. My power to weight was good. My energy felt right. I had plenty of rest in the week. Yeah, I'm feeling good, thank you, Ryan. I tend to do a bit better in the morning. I'm a morning guy. I also think your cortisol and adrenaline is higher in the morning, and so it suits training because of stress hormones. Kind of, they give you an energy of sorts, but they also help with the fat burning, obviously, the process of liposis, converting fat into energy. Ooh. Right, so, I'm gonna try and not butcher Ed's training. I'm gonna stay seated, try and get the cadence up. And not, you know, there'll be times when you have to get out of the saddle because I'm not on ERG mode. But in the main, it'll be a question of trying to keep that nice circular pedal motion with a bit of a pullback on the pedal. Right, I'll go at 14. So there's 13 sets of these, which means I'll be done at what, 23.30 for the first block, then there's a second block. As always, the first one's easy. It's the other nine, uh, the other 12 that I'm worried about. Morning, Aaron. Thank you for joining, sir. Ed. Goes without saying, I'm going to be hating you very shortly. Just playing with the gearing. That was a bit of a muck up there, sorry. Two down.
avoiding the temptation to get out of the saddle. Again, still not getting the gearing right where it tends to go. Pull down. Pipe down. Well, wow. it's hard. Well, these are hard. Seven down. Eight. Tomokazu, Everest, congratulations. Four to go.
three, six. Guys are home. Here we go. Think last one, then the second block. Wow. Cheers, Sean. Thank you, Alan, for the compliments. Yeah, Tamakosu. Amazing job. 11 hours 23 to Everest yesterday. I salute you, sir. Okay, five minutes recovery. Thanks for joining Stephen. Yeah, Robert, the pain face was hurting. And Sean, didn't feel like I was ripping up, but I was more or less, I think, in the what ranges there. Well, now taking on some carbohydrates. Well, well it felt good to be seated. Every so often you have to stand a bit just to keep the pedals turning without changing gear. But that was a bit better than yesterday, let's put it that way. Hey Scott, tonight 8 p.m. I'm assuming. Um, Sean, I'm not in sim mode. I, I, don't, I don't know what sim mode means. I'm not in ERG mode or ERG mode. Now, the reason I'm doing it on the Alp... Sorry, I'm shouting a bit, my apologies. So that's two minutes of recovery. Oh, sorry. The reason I'm doing it on the Alp is because I like to climb. And I don't do, I don't get much of an opportunity 
to climb in London. And so what I'm trying to do is ride with trainer difficulty 75% because I personally believe that replicates a 32 cassette on the back. And that's what I've got on my climbing bike, the Willio that I crashed. So that when I eventually get to hit some longer climbs, I'm kind of used to the kind of the resistance, the feel through the pedals, the torque you've got to create. Obviously it's not perfect, but it's about as much as I've got here in London. Yes, yeah, Scott, nice one on the 500. That's a very fast 500. And deservedly so, the content you're putting out is so original, so difficult to edit as well. And it makes you feel good, it makes me feel good anyway. You've got a lovely bunch of friends down there in Minehead. And they're very, very, uh, well, and obviously Nat, queen of Minehead. QOM. You're very lucky they put up with your antics. Ah, nice one, Sean, that makes sense, yeah. Cool. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah, trying to make it realistic. That's why I quite like Road Grand Tours. Because you get to ride like Von 2, the Stelvio. Oh, battery has just run out. All that kind of stuff. And again, it feels good in terms of the power going through the pedals. Right, so I'm on four minutes. Right, I'll go at four, 28.30 for five. to go. Wow. Feels like a big mountain to climb. Cadence is good. isn't there? Ten to go. I hate you, Ed Laverack.
it's quite hard when the ground undulates so focus on the, the cadence there Pulling a bit short here. Oh. Seven. I think I'm on 10.
Here we go. Oh. Stefan, it looks disgusting because it is disgusting. Hello, John. Hello, Andrew. From Brazil, good to have you mate. Thank you for joining, very early for you. Jane, please can you bring a battery, the blue one. Oh, okay, apologies. Okay, there's one more block. I forgot there is three blocks. The level of concern is high. <coughs> I think, I'm not sure how, oh, yeah, just, um, oh, thank you. Jane to the rescue of the battery. I'm filming for the vlog as well. James, thank you very much. I appreciate your support, sir. There's one more of these to go. For some reason, I think it's harder than 40, 20s. I think it's having a 13 of them. So, I think I went on 28, 30. So that takes me 29. Nine minutes. Takes me, ah, oh, no, I didn't go on 28, 30. 28.30, oh yeah, nine minutes, takes me 27.30, so it's, tw sorry, nine minutes, 37.30, 38 minutes is when I stopped, so 38, I need to go on 43, yeah, if you could, uh, Never mind that. So I just mucking around with the GoPro. The joys of trying to live stream and vlog when you're as clumsy as me. <laughs> Mission accomplished. So you have to, you can't put it straight. You have to kind of straddle it. So it has to go like that, otherwise it doesn't fit in. So if you then, thank you. Oh, okay. So I am right. 
I think it is 43 that I go on. Mick, how are you today, sir? Quinton had a very fine race yesterday that we watched, didn't he? Graham, yeah, this is the last block. It's called the tank drainer. Yeah, so what I'm targeting, and I'm falling a tad short, my FTP is 299. Well, it was when I last tested it. It might be a tad lower at the moment, I'm not sure. And this, the 30 second intervals, thank you, are meant to be at 115 to 120% of FTP. So that's 345 to 360 watts. I fell a tiny bit short of that, I reckon, on average in the last block. But, hey Darren, how's it going? So I fell a bit short. But I haven't got ERG on, so there's times when I'm way over it as well. So here we go. Forty-three minutes. Trying to stay seated. Hey, Rich. Twelve to go. I don't know why I'm smiling. Shorter recovery. Um, they feel harder, Mick.
और Me. Pretty good. Yeah.
Disgusting. Oh. Oh. Sorry, I wasn't able to talk very much there. But I reckon the difference between like 30 15s and 40 20s and 60 30s is that over the 10 minute block, and typically they're 10 minute blocks, you're getting much more time, well, not much more, a bit more time in that kind of 115 to 120% of FTP range, i.e. zone five, six. And with the diminished recovery, it's really building your capacity ultimately to recover at threshold when you're in a race. Because if you can kind of drop to 100, 200 watts in the recoveries, the 15 seconds, you're not having to punch nearly as often as 340 to 360 in a race. So it's a nice little training session to bank. Right, what I'm gonna do is see what the normalized power and all that kind of stuff is on training peaks, because that might be quite interesting. It's what I always do at the end of a training session. But what I have to do, I'm not sure why, I have to exit Zwift and then reboot it up. So just give me one second. I would definitely recommend that training session. Let's have a look at what Zwift says it was. All right, critical power. You see, none of these are stonking numbers, but you know, the 10 minute power, you know, for the, um, so, so it's 9.30, wasn't it, each interval? Well, basically, the 10 minute power, you can see even with the 15 second rests, you know, for 300 watts, and that gives you a feel for the kind of the intensity of each of those little blocks. But the 15 seconds rest is just enough to bring the heart rate just enough down that you can go again and again and again. And the fact that you're doing it 13 times um, in that nine and a half minutes definitely condenses a hell of a lot of intensity into a short period of time. Look, that whole training, including mucking around in the warm up by accident, was 55 minutes. Um, so let's exit this so that it can then download into um, training peaks. And I'll tell you what all the normalized was and all that kind of stuff. Cause that stuff's quite interesting. It gives you a feel for just how punchy and how applicable to Zwift racing um, that is. Right, so I'll call back up Zwift because otherwise we've got nothing to look at. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Phil Gammon, yeah, pushing 400 watts for an hour, I mean, that's the difference between a naturally talented pro who, who got into the pro ranks the hard way with just sheer willpower, effort, setback after setback after setback. That guy is an inspiration. I've read both of his books, or certainly two of his, no, three of his books. There's also a summary of all of his kind of jokey stuff that he wrote for a magazine. But the two books about um, when he was racing in the USA and then his experience at Garmin um, was a real eye opener to just how brutal um, you know it, it, it is to get onto the world tour. And of course, Phil was very unfortunate in that. Oh God, come on! He um he was in America trying to break into the pro ranks just after all the Lance Armstrong. Um, and all the doping scandals like Festina and all that kind of stuff. And all the money um, was coming out of um, advertising and cycling. And so he was racing for really very low salaries compared to what you might think a pro athlete ought to have, you know, for someone like that. Right, so how did I feel? I felt normal. Thank you. So the map, I'll tell you. I'll tell you the numbers while I'm trying to show them. So over that 56 minutes, 
the normalized power was 267 watts. Um, but when you look at the peaks, so the peak 10 minute power was 310 watts, it says here on training peaks, which is, that tends to be a bit more accurate than Zwift. And then let's have a look at the, um, the no oh, sorry, I've just lost it. I'll, I'll just call up the normalized on say that first block because that first block was probably my best block yeah that was 320 watts over that 10 minutes the normalized power and that's where I got the average power 310 watts you may or may not be able to see it I just kind of highlighted it there on the training peaks I think that's what Ed's training is so good uh, for. It's really, you know, getting you to spend a lot more time in zone five, zone six, gradually reduce the recoveries. And then you find, on well, a good leg stay, when you're in a race, you can kind of go from that kind of 30 second to one minute punch and then recover in zone three and zone four much better. That is the joy of this. I say, hey, thank you very much. I wouldn't say tough, I would say persistent. Um, I'm doing high intensity really in terms of polarized training three times a week, but there'll only be really two really tough ones like that. And then one of them will be like, um, Ed will prescribe some kind of zone three with surges. So you might be doing like one or two, sorry, two or three blocks of 15 to 20 minutes. And then every two minutes you'll have a 30 second or a 15 second surge. Um, uh, well above threshold, i.e. for me, threshold's 300, so I might be doing the 20 minute block at, I don't know, 250 to 265 watts, i.e. 80 to 85% of FTP, but then every two minutes I'll be surging at kind of anywhere from 300 to, I don't know, 300, sorry, 300 to 350 watts, i.e. 100 to 130% of FTP. Um, so yeah, three polarized training sessions a week typically, two of them tough a bit like that, one of them tough in a different way. I, I do actually find at the moment, especially coming back from injury, that stringing together those kind of upper zone three, lower zone four big blocks to be very, very tiring. So need a bit more on that. And then I'll also try and squeeze in one Zwift race a week, um, which um, probably isn't optimal if I'm being honest. Um, for everything that I've read says that really to get the maximum benefit from polarized training, it should be three intense sessions a week and that's probably about the max. And so often you find in the race that obviously you're doing either like a massive 10 minute effort or um, you know a series of big three or two minute efforts and lots of surges. And so that definitely impacts on the recovery. Therefore, what I have been doing of late is taking two full rest days off the bike and sometimes three full rest days um, rather than even doing zone two um, just to give the body total uh, ability to recover and the reason I do the Zwift race of course is because it's a great way to engage um, with everybody in the community and I enjoy um, I do all the live I enjoy all the live chat the questions and the tips that I get I mean I get some really good tips um, in the live streams so um, you're probably right. Um, I, do, I do enjoy pushing it right to the edge. Oddly enough, I filmed a little piece on that the other day um, when I was in the car, um, which you'll see on the vlog. For me, I don't know what it is, but that feeling when you're on the bike and you're kind of teetering on the brink of blowing up, yet you're somehow just the right side of blowing up. You're, you're nearly, you're not too deep into the red that you can't come out of it, but you're kind of very close. I find something very uplifting about that. Um, and then when you see the, you know, I like all the data afterwards and all the kind of the satisfaction of having banked a good training session. So yeah, enjoying the pain curve. That is definitely one way of describing it or enjoying kind of just gradually pushing uh, outside your comfort zone and then finding that actually your comfort zone has increased dramatically. But anyway, um, really appreciate all the support for that training. It was fun. Definitely recommend that kind of, you know, 60-30s, 30-30s, 40-20s, that kind of thing. 
Um, Ed often prescribes those and sometimes he'll prescribe them and then stick on a, a block of zone three at the back end of it just to really get you used to building the aerobic engine as, as well as the um, anaerobic engine. Um, but definitely, yeah, give that one a try, maybe one or two blocks and build to the three. Um, but um, yeah, perfect. And thank you very much for joining me on a Sunday. And Ed Laverack's obviously streaming a race where his zone two is like my zone four or five. Um, so go and enjoy his stream and thank you very much for joining me. Appreciate it all. Take care.